Cañizales de Janano and I'm a PhD student at Technological University Dublin in Ireland. I, I am specialized in nutrition and food science and in addition to doing my PhD I also do some teaching hours for the School of uh, Food Sciences and Health also in TU Dublin. <music> Well, I guess there are two reasons. Uh, first, uh, I guess I was led to believe that I wasn't smart enough for other sciences. Uh, and I was also dissuaded from doing uh, different careers, uh, like geology, because uh, they had less um, or worse uh, job prop job uh, prospects. So I did nutrition instead and I hated every minute of it and then I did full science and I fell in love with the discipline. So that explains uh, why am I in this field. I don't think I was inspired by someone in particular. I Maybe it's very mundane but I, I think since I was since I was little, I was very science inclined. And then if I have to blame something, at the time I was younger, there used to be these uh, really cool cartoons of uh, Pinky and Brains and the Big Man's World. And another one, uh, it was a French show uh, that was called Once Upon a Time. And there was uh, Once Upon a Time history, the blood or the body, the universe. Um, so yeah, since I was a kid, I think that made me want to be a math scientist and if I had to blame someone I was very lucky and I had really good science teachers in high school and um, so I think thanks to them I also really really got into science. I am doing a PhD in the toxicology of silver nanoparticles when they are used in food plastic containers. So we're just trying to see if we have these silver particles in the containers, do they come out? And if they come out, are they toxic? And do they actually come out in a quantity uh, or in an amount enough to have an effect? So it's not rocket science, it's maybe not gonna change the world, but I like it and this is what I do. So I guess one of the things that I find exciting is that I am in control of uh, my research. So it's always like a puzzle. You have a question and you ask yourself the why, the how, and then you use design and experiment to try and find the answer to that question. And another thing that I find really, really endearing about science and about my job is the people that are in it. because. Sometimes when you're younger and you're in a and, and you like sciences and you're a bit geeky, um, you're like I don't know ostracized. But when you're at this level, um, you get to find people that is excited about the same things that you are. So I find that and the challenge of doing research, the things that are more exciting about my job. Good question. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if I'll make a difference with my research in particular because the subject is very specific and the trend on plastic is a bit dying off but um, I do hope I can make a difference as a lecturer uh, which is one of my goals, uh, my goal is to become a lecturer so um, I really hope that I can be for someone like the same exciting and endearing teacher that that my teachers in high school were for me if that makes sense so i i really hope that i can pers i can inspire another person to join sciences and enjoy them as much as i do i don't know if i can look that far into the future especially when you're a phd um but in 10 years, what I really hope I'll be doing is um, I really hope I'm teaching and I really hope I'm researching in a field that is as challenging and exciting to me as it is right now. So 
I guess there are different reasons. One of the reasons would be that we can, because we now can, and we need to keep demonstrating that we can. So before, like in the past, women will not be allowed to study, and even when they were allowed to study, there will be fields that will be closed for them, and it took a great deal of efforts and sacrifices and um, talent from many women to allow for us nowadays to be doing what we want. So we need to keep challenging that status quo and keep demonstrating that women are as valuable as anybody to be part of the STEM fields. Um, and then secondly, we also need more women in the STEM field because there are generations that are coming behind us that need role models to teach them that they can also pursue their dreams if their dreams are uh, the STEM fields. So basically we need to be like the Katie Bowman for the little girls that are like, I don't know, in kindergarten at the moment. Um, I guess if I had to give myself advice, I would be, it would be never be afraid of pursuing whatever thing it is what you want. If this is uh, sciences, go for sciences. Don't let anybody tell you, don't even let yourself tell you that you are not good enough for it. Just go for it because when you, when you pursue what you want or what makes you happy, you are going to be like whatever is difficult in there, it's going to be like a challenge for you. Well, if you choose something that you don't like, everything is going to be difficult because nothing is going to make you happy. There is not going to be a spark that pulls you forward. So that will be my advice to my younger self. I have, like, I have, I've made my motto, this uh, quote that is attributed to Francis Bacon that says, like, knowledge is power. So not, all, not only do I feel that knowledge is truly power, power to understand like how everything works around us. It's just like science is just in every little thing that's around us at the moment, like from the computer that we use to the way the pens that we use as well uh, works to the bend in a tomato can that allows us to preserve that can of tomato. So there is science in our life and STEM sciences allow us to harness the power and understand how things work. And if we understand how things work, then we can work to make the world better, to improve the world that we have and make it a better place. So that is why I will study sciences again and again if I had the chance.